Hi, Jiro doers. Welcome back to this video on multi-company and branch management. Our Bloom business has been blooming recently. We've just opened another store in Belgium and launched a new company in Portugal where our new service subscriptions are flourishing. Since Odoo supports creating a hierarchical structure between parent companies and subsidiaries, we added that new store and the new company to our database. That way we can manage everything from one place. Here in our database, let's go into the settings app and we'll click here on manage companies. We can see an overview of our main companies, one in Belgium, one in Canada, and now one in Portugal. We can see a subsidiary of the Belgian main company as a new branch, not a new main company. Now there's some important information about main companies and branches. First, the main company's chart of accounts, main currency, and taxes apply to all of its branches though branch-specific journals can be created. Second, the parent company manages a common fiscal period, so the parent company's lock dates and closing dates apply to all branches too, although branches can have their own lock dates that come before the parents. Third, the main company can access reports, invoices, bills, etc. for all branches, while branches can only see their own records. Finally, the main company and branches must be in the same country to maintain accounting consistency. So on the main company form, we can click into the branches tab. And here is our new store in Antwerp. We could even add sub branches to our branches if needed by clicking into the branches tab here and repeating this process. And there's no limit on the number of branches that a company can have. If we go back to the overview of main companies, we can see that branch right here in our branches column. And if we click on our main company in the top right corner, we can also find that branch here. Can all of the users access all of the companies? Great question. So you can restrict or grant users access to specific companies, limiting their view to only records related to the companies that they can access. And that's including companies and branches. So we'll go into our settings again and click manage users. And then we can select one of these users and you can add or remove companies in the allowed companies field right here. Then if we trade between our different companies, we can activate the enter company transactions option. So we'll go ahead and activate that, save it, and then we can come back to this field. And now we see that we can select which documents to automatically create when trading between our own companies and generate the counterpart documents in the recipient companies. So we can also choose the document creator and we can specify if we want to create them in draft or go ahead and create them as a validated document. And can you share accounts between companies? Yes, indeed. So the same account can belong to multiple companies and accounts from different companies can be merged. So we'll look at the Belgian and Portuguese companies for this example, and we'll open the profit and loss report by going into the accounting app. So let's have a look at the P&L for both companies. And we're looking at the generic profit and loss report to view the before picture. So with the revenue accounts open, we can see all the revenue accounts from Belgium and from Portugal, but it's not consolidated. So since I'm on the Belgian company, I see the account numbers for the Belgian accounts, whereas the Portuguese accounts, I only see the name. So to share accounts, there are two ways to set it up. First, for a new account, we'll open our Belgian chart of accounts and we'll look at our revenue accounts and look at the revenue account for the services subscription. We'll click view. And then we can select the mapping tab to map the account with the Portuguese chart of accounts. So here we'll add our account number and it's important that the number we use here is not already assigned in the Portuguese chart of accounts. Then if we go back to the accounting tab, we can add the Portuguese company in the company field so that we'll be able to use this account for that company as well. 
Now we'll switch to the Portuguese company and we'll create a new customer invoice with this Portuguese account to show how it will look on our financial reports. So let's add our customer, Jessica Johnson, and we'll add our product. We'll do the quarterly garden maintenance for just five acres. And then we're going to update this account with the account that we just created and we'll confirm. Do I have to add the account manually each time? So we're adding it manually, but of course you can set this income account on the product category or on the product itself so that it applies automatically. So that's it for our new mapped account, but then there's also the merging tool. So in our company selector, we'll make sure that we have the Belgian company and the Portuguese one selected, and we'll go back to our chart of accounts. And here we'll look at just our revenue accounts and we'll search for goods. And so this account in Portugal actually tracks the same information as this account in Belgium. So let's simplify things by making them the same account. We'll select the two accounts and go into action and merge accounts. And once we click merge, we can see that we have them both here. We have both companies in the tags there and we can rename it by just calling it sales goods so that it's clear for us. So this selected account is now a merged account of the two into one single shared account accessible by all of the chosen companies, just as if it had been created to be shared. Of course, we can unmerge it if we need by going to action, unmerge account, and it'll tell us which accounts it's being unmerged into so we can see the two accounts that it will become. Both accounts will again be available if we click on merge, but in this case, we don't want to do that because we want to see how it impacts our accounting reports. So for example, we can go back to our profit and loss statement, make sure that we have all the companies that we want. And now, since we're on the generic report already, we can go ahead, expand revenue, and we see we have our mapped subscription services right here. And if we click on the amount, we can see that it does include our invoice to Jessica Johnson. So this has invoices for both the Belgian company and the Portuguese company consolidated into one account instead of having one account for each company. Back on the profit and loss, our merged accounts for the goods revenues are right here, sales goods as we renamed it. And in this consolidated environment, we can also use the multi-ledgers to help us group and filter data. So here in the profit and loss, we've configured different multi-ledgers like our local gap, the IFRS, and consolidation. So here we can expand Bloom and take a look at the details. Right now we're viewing the local gap ledger and I can see which journals are included or excluded. It excludes, if I select the consolidation, for example, it excludes all the intercompany accounts and the data automatically updates. So that's all for our multi-company and branch management in Odoo. This has been your pal Dal. I'll see you in the next one.